This is part two of lesson 5.2. We're going to finish the examples from the previous video and then move on to study the role of k in the quadratic relations. So we had seen this question here. Where we're looking at how these graphs relate to the graph of y is equal to x squared. And we saw that when you had the plus k over here, the minus k over here, that was a translation. Uh, the translation was either um, a, an upward one or a vertical or a downward one. So here we have that the x squared plus 5 graph is basically x squared translated up by 5 units. And the x squared minus 7 graph is the x squared graph translated downwards by 7 units. You could find the vertex by remembering that uh, for a form like this, the vertex is always going to be 0k. So 0 in this case, 5. Um, and that would be our vertex for that function there. We could also find the vertex for uh, the other function that we have over here. Um, same idea, it would be 0, but in this case, negative 7. Um, so just to show you how you would graph these, if you want to base it off of the x squared graph, uh, we'll take a look at the x squared plus 5 over here. We'll make that, um, it's already drawn the previous graph above in purple. What you would do is you take a look at your x squared um, graph, and you'd notice that this is basically just x squared moved up by 5. So for every point, you can move it up five uh, points. Uh, so at 0, 0, I could move that up 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's my new vertex at 0, 5. Um, at 1, 1 for the x squared parabola, um, I'd take that y value and add 5 to it, so 6. So that 1 would become 1, 6. Um, at negative 1, 1, I move it up 5. So it's negative 1, 6 now. I do that for every one of the points, and I have graphed my... Um, y is equal to x squared plus 5. If I was going the other way around, I would simply take away 7 units for um, this equation here uh, for each point, and that's how I could graph it. Because we're starting off with x squared and making some adjustments to it, we're calling x squared our parent graph or parent function. It's the graph that we're making changes to based on our equations. So here we saw the role of k. Uh, in charge of doing vertical translations up or down, depending on the um, sine of k. Now we're going to go and take a look at the role of h. Your table in your notes is not filled out. I've pre-filled it out here already. You should know how to fill out tables of values by now for different equations. I'll do one example with you one more time to make sure you understand it. If you need more help, please look at other videos where I've done this in the past. Um, so we have uh, three relations we're going to graph, a, b, and c. y is equal to x squared, b is equal to x plus 2 squared, and then c is equal to x minus 2 squared. So let's go ahead and fill in some information over here. a is the value in front of the x here, so we have a is 1. Um, if you expand this, you would see the value in front of your x would be 1 as well. And then same idea over here. If you expand it, you'd see the value in front of the x squared, I should say, is um, 1. Uh, for h and k, we know that x squared from our previous example, h is 0, k is 0, so the vertex is at 0, 0. Now in this case here, I want you to pay close attention. Don't be fooled by this. In the previous examples, we had seen this. We saw x squared plus 2. This meant that our h was 0. I bet our k was 2 here. Notice this is a different format. Here you have x plus 2 in brackets and the whole thing squared. So what that means is we're not dealing with k over here. Here we're dealing with h. And h is going to have the opposite sign that it has in brackets there. So h is going to be minus 2. There is a k, but you don't see it, and that's because it's 0. So k is 0. And our vertex is minus 2, comma, 0. Let's go take a look at the example over here. y is equal to x minus 2 squared. Here's our h value. We change the sign. It's 2. There is a k, we just don't see it. 0 in this case. 0. So our vertex is positive 2, 0 this time. Uh, again, I went in and put in all the values that are required, um, but just again to show you how to do this if you needed help. Um, if you want to find the value of y for y is equal to x squared when x is equal to negative 3, you would simply plug that into your equation. y is equal to negative 3 squared, which is 9. And you could do the same thing here. y is equal to 3 squared, which is 9. Um, if you want to do for the relation that's b over here, where x is equal to negative 3, you would simply do y is equal to brackets negative 3 plus 2 squared, which is negative 1 squared, which is 1.
Um, you can do the same thing for when you have positive 3 over here. So if you have positive 3, uh, you would do y is equal to 3 plus 2 squared, which is y is equal to 5 squared, which is 25. And so you can go ahead and try that out and see, check to make sure that you do know how to find values in a table of values to plot um, graphs. Um, I'll tell you the answers here, 1 and 25 over here. Chances are we're not going to use our values of 25 when we're putting our graphs on the grids, only because um, we'd have to do some, we, it's easier to go up by 1s here rather than go up by a different scale. Um, so we'll just go up by 1s and ignore the ones that go off the charts. We just need a few points to plot it. So we'll make our grid to plot our three parabolas and see how they all relate to x squared, our parent graph. Again, you would use a ruler, so you'd be a lot neater than I am with this. And you would label your grid fully with all the numbers, with the positive numbers going up, the negative numbers on the left, positive numbers on the right, and negative numbers below the uh, intersect line there. So we have um, our x and our y here, and I'm going up by units of 1. So for the uh, y is equal to x squared parabola, when I'm at negative 2, I'm at 4. When I'm at uh, negative 1, I'm at 1. When I'm at 0, I'm at 0. When I'm at 1, I'm at 1. When I'm at 2, I'm at 4. Oops, let's erase that. And then I can plot, I can connect these points here to get my parabola of y is equal to x squared. And notice that's correct, the vertex is 0, 0 indeed. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use a different color to trace our um, relation uh, b over here. Uh, so for b, when you're at negative 3, you're at 1. So let's go to negative 3. And then we're at 1. When you're at negative 2, you're at 0. So negative 2, 0. When you're at negative 1, you're at 1. When you're at uh, 0, you're at 4. Let's make another, uh, I'm going to add another point there. I'm going to put the negative 4 point in there. So negative 4 plus 2 is um, negative 2 squared. So when you're at negative 4, you're at 4 as well. It just makes it easier, nice and easy to make my, to trace my parabola. So here I have y is equal to brackets x plus 2 squared. Before we draw our last Parabola. Let's take a look if we can spot any patterns here. This is our x squared. This is our x plus 2 squared. What happened to the parabola when we did that plus 2 in brackets squared there? That's right. It shifted over to the left. We have a vertical. We don't have a vertical translation this time. We have a the opposite, not vertical, but horizontal. So we have a horizontal translation happening. And when it seems like when there's a plus in there, the translation occurred to the left side. So each point shifted over to the left by 2, this point to the left by 2, this point to the left by 2, this point to the left by 2. Each point shifted over to the left by 2. Interesting. Let's see if we're on to something. Let's graph our, graph our other um, relation, C, and um, see if we can spot a pattern there. So let's choose a different color. Let's do uh, green over here. So um, when we're at negative uh, 1, we're at 9. So negative 1, we're at 9 for that one. So here's negative 1, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Good, there's some room there. When we're at 0, we're at 4. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Good, there's some room there. When we're at uh, 1, we are at 1. So 1, and then 1. Good. When we are at 2, we are at 0. Good. When we're at 3, we're at 1. 
good. I'm going to add one more point in there just so I could have nice points to connect the dots with. I'm going to add 4. Um, so for 4, I would put 4 in there. 4 minus 2 is 2. 2 squared, that's 4. So at 4, I'm at 4. And so I don't even really need that big high point that I have over here. And sometimes you might notice that. You might put in a table of values and realize you don't need some points. And that's okay. You can go and add other points in there. Not in your head. You'll add them in when you write them down so I can see what you're doing. But you can do that. Um, so here we have y is equal to x minus 2 squared. Notice that, again, we still seem to have a horizontal translation, a horizontal shift. This x squared graph was moved this time to the right. So when we have a negative in there, it seems like we're shifting everything to the right by this value of h here. So this point moved to the right 2. Um, this point over here moved to the right 1, 2. Uh, this point over here moved to the right 1, 2. So I suspect if there was a 3 in there, it would have moved 1, 2, 3 to the right. Um, and then again, when we had a positive there, it moved to the left. So it would have moved 1, 2, 3 to the left. So you can see that the H plays an interesting role. It helps us to do a, a horizontal translation as opposed to doing a vertical translation that we saw with the K last time. So how are these graphs related? Well, we know that H helps to translate. So let's just type that in here. So we know that this is y is equal to x squared translated to the left by two units. So we have a horizontal translation happening here. Horizontal translation. Oops, let's go back for a second. And we should say horizontal. Translation. Whereas this one here, this is y is equal to x squared translated to the right by two units. Again, a horizontal translation. And let's put that in here. So we can see the role of H and we can write our conclusions. So in this graph here, X minus H squared, we know that it is a horizontal translation, meaning left to right. Horizontal translation of the graph y is equal to x squared. If h is positive, or in other words, if the sign in the brackets is um, negative, then the graph is going to be translated to the right by h units. If h is negative, so the sign inside the brackets is um, positive, the graph is translated to the left. And our vertex changes a little bit. Our vertex is now going to be h0. So the opposite sign of what's in the brackets, and then 0 because our k for a situation like this is 0. And the axis of symmetry is going to be h or x is equal to h. So if we take a look at our graphs up here, um, our vertex in this case for x plus 2 is, um, x plus 2 squared is um, 0, 0, negative 2, or negative 2, 0, rather. So negative 2 comes from this h value here, and then 0 is the fact that our k is 0. And over here our vertex is um, 2, 0 coming from this h value over here, and the fact that our k is 0. And our axis of symmetry is h. Our axis of symmetry for this parabola here is x is equal to, well, 2. And our axis of symmetry for this one here is x is equal to, well, negative 2. So we spotted those patterns, and in the next video we're going to do a few examples together to make sure we can solidify and understand those patterns.